My name is Jason Jurgena, and I'm the registrar for the U.S. Department of the Interior Museum. It does come up occasionally. I've helped out FEMA in the past with uh, uh, the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Uh, not with FEMA, but I've responded to other disasters such as the Gulf oil spill. I came down several times for several months uh, to help out with that as well. Uh, probably the photos, because honestly with the books it's a fairly similar process. Okay. The same with documents. The only thing you have to be careful with on documents and signed books would be the solubility of the inks used. Like even if the book or the document is fairly stable, uh, insoluble, the ink that it was signed with. And so you'll want to test areas uh, with a Q-tip, just dip it in some distilled water. You want to use distilled water uh, because uh, tap water sometimes will still leave some stains. It's not quite as pure as distilled water. Um, but if you don't have access to distilled water, you can certainly use uh, warm tap water to do these cleaning processes. And so with the Q-tip, you'll dip it in and you will test some locations on the ink just to be sure that it's not going to uh, wash away the ink. And so when you touch it, you take a look at the Q-tip and just see if it has um, if it has picked up ink on the Q-tip. And if that's the case, you're probably better off um, not getting it wet or doing it very briefly during the, the cleaning and then drying process. Okay. Well, a lot of times after flooding, what you'll find is your photos are stuck together. The emulsion on them uh, is kind of gotten sticky. And so these are now kind of one, and this might be three, like you see here, it might be a block of 30. And so what you want to do is you get three pans. These are, I think, for cooking turkeys <laughs> and some mesh screening, uh, not the metal mesh screening, but you want the, the other mesh screening that's much softer and more pliable. It won't scratch, it won't rust. And you use that in order to move a lot of things. So when things are wet, they're usually much more prone to get ripped, get pulled apart. Um, and so, and they'll also be heavier. So even their own weight uh, can be to their disadvantage as far as saving them. So you'll put them in some, some water and <clears throat> given time, these will start to separate. Um, and because if you just tried to pull them apart before, you're gonna end up taking part of the photograph facing with it. And so this, sometimes it takes a while, sometimes not so long, but here, since these haven't been stuck together very long, and you don't want to force them, you just, like that one came off fairly easy, this one's coming off now, so the water allows them to separate. The reason we have three pans here is because this water is going to end up the dirtiest. This is where it just came in. And if there are, if there are things stuck to the photographs, you can use a soft paintbrush to kind of wipe off any debris. You don't really want to touch or blot photographs too much, especially um, that can cause some damage. Um, so if you can, you can either pick them up from the sides and support them like this or use the entire screen. You move them into the next one and you let those. And so that's just to keep cleaning it further, like from the dirtier water to cleaner yes. water so it gets even more clean. So we'll move it into the final one and then we will move it on to a rack for drying. This can either be like a clothes rack, like a folding sweater rack, something like that, and that allows air circulation on the bottom as well. Or you can use a white towel. You want to use white because you don't want the transfer of any colors. Mm -hmm. And so we'll move these on to here to dry. And as you can see, this takes up quite a bit of space, just the setup here and, you know, just three photographs have taken up most of this towel. So when you do this, you want to 
plan ahead, have plenty of space to start this. You don't want to have a bunch of wet photographs and no place to dry them. There are other ways that you can do this. You can do it on an indoor clothesline where you can just clip the corner of the photograph onto there and hang it on a clothesline to dry. Um, you don't want to put them out in the sun. Direct sunlight can fade the photographs, but you do want air circulation in the room. You don't want a fan pointed directly at the photographs, but maybe pointed around, you know, just in a direction so there's circulation in the room. There sense. are several reasons to be wearing the gloves. Uh, the oils on your hands can uh, alter photographs, uh, damage photographs, but also the water that you took these out of is not very clean. And so you want to avoid getting that on your skin, um, as well as the potential for mold growth over time. You don't want to be touching the mold. Uh, everyone is now familiar with N95 masks. And so this is a good idea as well for when you're um, gathering up your, your treasures to try to salvage when you're in not necessarily the cleanest environment. And a lot of times safety goggles is a good idea as well along with the nitrile gloves. It works differently with different types of photographs. It works great with, you know, kind of the more modern photographs. They're fairly stable, uh, might not work so well with uh, photographs that are printed on a printer. Uh, you know, you take a digital photograph and you print it out on a piece of paper. Hopefully, you know, you have that digital file still. Um, this same process can be done with those, but your results might vary quite a bit as to how how well, you know, you wouldn't leave those pieces, those items in water for as long as you can leave um, normal photographs. And do documents, you want to salvage your uh, you know, wedding certificate, your birth certificates, things like that. And so those can be, you wouldn't think it, but those can be put right in the water as well. In fact, I'll, I'll do it with this. And so, these can be dried out the same way. Um, and so, I should have done the screen. <laughs> we can start do, over. Do as, like. do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but, as you can see, this was printed on a printer and it's, yeah. it's working fairly well, but that might not be the case for long. And so, you'll go into the third bath and then I don't have the room here for it, but this can then be, we'll let those stick together again. Perfect. For round for, two? For, for demonstrations. Actually, we do that for demonstrations. And so this can then be, and then if I didn't have other things on the table, you can put the towel on the front of it, yeah. flip it over flip it over again so that you have the, the side with ink on it facing up as it dries. You always want to have the image up when it